Good evening, and welcome to Spiritual Keys with Ken and Sally. Thank you for joining us tonight. Always good to have you on board. <laughs> tonight begins a new Hebrew month, the month Sivan. What does that mean for us? We're not simply reciting some historical experience of long ago under an old covenant, but declaring those times and seasons of God's plan unfolding as coming to light, coming out of the shadows, coming out of the forms. For everything in the Old Testament for us was just a foreshadowing of what was to come into its fullness, into full manifestation. We are those for whom the ends of the ages have come. But that which was spoken long ago by the prophets in the Spirit now is being spoken through or in the Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things. Stop and think for a moment. In these last days he has spoken to us in his Son. Now what does that mean? That means we are in him. We are in the Son. The Son is in the Father as the Father is in the Son. He is within us, declaring these things and making himself known that our true identity might come out of light, no more out of darkness. Today's theme is Declare a New Day. And, by the way, be sure and let us know you're out there watching. Just Say hello or where you're coming from. That way we know who's on board with us. God may have something special to say to you, but either way, we want to hear what he's saying. And we thank you for joining us, connecting with us in this moment, because it's in our joining together that we really begin to experience a sense of the kingdom of God which not only is within, but as Jesus said, is in your midst, or it's in the midst of our gathering. It represents the combining of two or more persons, that that presence become a living reality in which heaven unfolds within our sense of community or communion. And that is our desire, to experience the communion of Christ, that inner knowing and sharing together, that goes beyond words, that goes into thoughts and feelings. Most of all, it comes into the light of understanding. Let's pray. Father, we do thank you for this day. We thank you for those who have joined us and those who will yet hear this broadcast. But we thank you that in this present moment, we can reach within, tap into that inner well, that inner path, and experience the life-giving presence of Christ within us, who is that Spirit within. Now the Lord is the Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, being within us, there is freedom, there is liberty. May the freedom of our innermost self arise and declare our true nature, our true identity, that we can throw off the garments of our beggarly selves, and embrace the righteousness and the fullness of Christ within us, being reminded that before time, before coming into this world, we were created in Christ Jesus for that appointed purpose that you have established for all ages to unfold and reveal your fullness, of which we're all partakers. In Jesus' name, amen. Over to you. Amen. Thank you all for joining us tonight. Good to see you. And this new Hebrew month is the third month in the Hebrew calendar. And three is a powerful number. It is a combining. And we looked at the two tribes previously, Judah, Issachar, and tonight the third tribe in relation to Savan is the tribe of Zebulun. Now these three tribes were all on the east side of the tabernacle in the wilderness. This is just a type and yes it relates to us today because the east side always represents 
the new day. Where does the sunshine come from? The east. And I believe it's just a type that God is wanting us to truly declare with him a new day is arising. The new day is shining forth in understanding as his presence gets more and more real, realized within our being. And the more we truly look unto Christ, who is the author and the finisher of our faith, God wants to give us all a new beginning because he declares, behold, get a revelation, I make all things new. And what better thing to make new than our heart? David prayed, create in me a clean heart, O God, renew a right spirit within me. That right spirit is a harmonious place in God. And David had a new beginning. We touched on it last week. And he was asking a question, and I'm going to go there right now. It's in 2 Samuel chapter 6, verse 9, today being June 9th. And David was afraid of the Lord that day and said, How shall the ark of the Lord come to me? We're talking about the ark of the covenant we're talking about where the name of the Lord dwelt. We're talking about the presence of the Lord. And he dwelt, and that's what the tribe means this month, dwelling place. He dwelt between the cherubims, the Lord of hosts. We're talking about a powerful presence of the Lord God Almighty, the Most High God. The God of glory who lives within us. It's Christ in us, the hope of glory. So David's question is, how shall the ark of the Lord come to me? Because he had a heart to bring up the ark, but he did it out of his own strength. And God's not going to bless our own human effort, and our own strength. The point is, is God wants a people who are leaning, relying, living out from the divine presence of God. So David got the order right. And the order was the divine order. And this new ministration or administration, which this typifies, is right where we're at now. We are living in a new dimension, the Holy Spirit given to us, so that we operate out of the spirit of the law of life that is in Christ Jesus. And the presence of the Lord... We see in 2 Samuel 6, David got his praise on and the ark came up with the shouting, with the sound of the trumpet, and it was a day of celebration. And David was clothed in a ephod, which is speaking of the illumination of the 12 tribes of Israel that were upon his heart. It was an inward work. This is a season, the third month of Savannah, where God wants the Ark of His Covenant, the presence of God, Christ within us, the hope of glory truly arising to its place in the city of David, in Zion, in a place of more and more light, meaning God is wanting in our own heart and life to prepare a pathway, a new way, a new and living way, God's way, so that it is God who arises within us. And see, as God 
the ark, the presence arises within us. Let God arise. And this new day, we might want to declare, let God, love, light, fire, presence arise. And all of those enemies be scattered. All of the past be released. All of the shame be released. Let God arise and let whatever has hindered us in the past to be destroyed. How? Let God arise and his enemies be shattered. As we praise him, as we incorporate Judah, the praise, as we praise him, and as we incorporate the law written on our heart, the law being glory, grace, truth, the principles of the idea and the mind of God, we move in a, a new dimension, a new beginning, a new cycle, a new sequence in the Lord. And that is the beauty of this month. And we have celebrated Pentecost because in the church it was Pentecost Sunday. But actually it's this week that Shavuot, the giving of the law, is celebrated. This is a time of giving and receiving the word of God in our hearts because the new covenant, it's all about it, the word, being a living reality in our heart so that we experience a new beginning as we allow the presence of the Lord, the exceeding glory that is within the word, the word becomes flesh within us and the word is full of grace and it's full of truth. Let's declare a new beginning, a new, fresh, living way that has been provided, that we are following that light that shines brighter and brighter within as we are aware of the presence of the Lord arising just like David, how shall the presence of God come to me? Oh, it's his way. It's his day. And we get to declare that new day arising. Truly, the whole earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of God as the waters cover the sea. That's a lot of glory. And that's as we become more and more aware and intimate with the divine presence of the Lord that is within. Very good. Well, I'm going to pick up on that too then. I was glad I still had my notes from last week at that, taking that scripture down. But picking back up what you were saying, David was afraid of the Lord that day. So he was not willing to take the ark of the Lord into his own city, the city of David. He took it and set it aside. Well, interesting, isn't it? He set it aside in the house of Obed-Edom, the Gittite, and everything that was going on in Obed-Edom's house in life was blessed. David may have prevented the ark from continuing its journey but he sure couldn't stop the power and the presence of God working through that ark and what it symbolized and represented. It's like the heart of God in the midst of his people, which is the word, the law, or the law of the spirit of life for us, not a legal law, but the presence of life itself. But as you were referring to the fact, it's interesting to note how David was dressed like a linen ephod or a linen garment. We recall that in the tabernacle of Moses, when the high priest went in daily before the angel of the Lord or the presence of God, he was before the veil that separated the holy place from the most holy. And when he went to minister before the Lord, he was always dressed in that beautiful garment, the priestly garments with the turban, the, uh, the sash, the breastplate, and so forth, all the beautiful garments. But when he went in one day a year and behind the veil into the most holy, he did not wear anything of that nature. 
he wore a very simple linen garment, perhaps much like David may have been wearing. And what was the purpose of that? We don't come before God decked out in our office, our title, our position, our heritage, our social standing, our position in the church or any other structure. We come in the simplicity of our soul, undecked, undecorated. But also the purpose of the linen was he was not to sweat. Not to sweat, not to perspire, as to indicate he put forth an effort to do what he was doing. You see, all of that is symbolical for us to understand what God is saying to us. Now, contrast on one hand, David, because of the death of one who sought to steady the ark, there's a death that takes place. David is fearful. So you have a fearful experience on one hand, but then it will later revert to a joyful experience on the other hand. But in between time, the joy of the Lord was in the house of Obed-Edom. Blessing was taking place there. He wasn't moving the ark around. He wasn't trying to do anything. He just opened his door and let, at David's request, the ark be housed there. He drew the blessing. He drew the benefit of it. You see, the Father really wants us... Well, let me put it back this step back a second. Is it because God wants us to be fearful of Him that things of this nature would happen? Is that what God wanted to teach David? Hold on, David. You need to be more fearful and more respectful of me. Well, in one sense, that's true. But not to be afraid in the sense we think fearfully. What David was doing was a good thing. How David was doing it was not. That's the point. What was it that God wanted David to understand? You don't come here as a king. You don't come here as a soldier, as a warrior in strength and might. After all, what was he? He had about 30,000 men with him. That's an impressive show of force. But when David went in, under the instruction that the correction had taken place. No, David, it's not your job to carry the ark, and it's not your job to figure out how to get it there. It's your job to follow the instruction of the Lord. If you don't know it, go to the priest. Find out what the law says there. Or listen to the Holy Spirit. What is God saying? But you see, a correction took place. It doesn't say it in this account. It will say it more in the next account or in the uh, First Chronicles 15 account. The second attempt was successful because what it says in Isaiah, and the government shall be upon his cart? No. Upon his ox? No. Upon his shoulders. And we know there would be four priests that would carry, or four Levites would carry that ark on their shoulders because the government, catch this, the government of the kingdom of God that is being established and formed in this earth is a priestly kingdom. David would prophesy these things. He would prophesy the Melchizedek order. He was the one who had a real revelation of that. More than anyone else we see perhaps in the scripture, with his understanding, his revelation, and his foresight. But you see, those steps had to be carried out to demonstrate what the heart of God was after. He was pleased. With, he didn't kill David as a result. He was pleased that David was doing what he did, and he did it out of a right heart. But don't assume anything. We, as I was saying last week, the, one of the most important things that we need to develop in our life is how to get an instruction from the Lord. Don't assume anything. Don't make plans. Don't figure out how to do it our way. Don't sweat the detail. No, we don't need to sweat, period. This is the doing of the Lord, and it's marvelous in our eyes, as it says in Isaiah. Also, the scripture in uh, Philippians, it is God who is at work in you to will and perform of this good pleasure. Well, God is working in us. What is it we're sweating? What is it we're worried about? 
why would we be fearful of God? Now, with David, you have to understand, yes, God, represented by the angel of the Lord, is external. But for us, that's not the case. He's totally internal. And it took Paul's revelation for us to understand that. It took also the, the words of Jesus saying, the Father within me. So the thing is, if God is in us, then he's the one we need to listen to. He's the one we need to follow. And if he's in us to will and not just to will, but to perform or to work, then it's his power, his energy, his strength that is activating in us. And we are in that river of grace. We are in the flow. In the river, the fish lives and moves and has its being, so to speak. The river carries us. The river surrounds us. The river sustains us. The river provides everything we have need of. The river is like the love of God. We are surrounded by the love of God. In this outer world, we don't imagine or conceive of that. But as we learn to move more intently, coming into a rest, that is, let God perform his work in us. Enter into a rest about the, when we speak of the finished work of the cross, the cross finished the law. It didn't finish the work of God. It finished the ability of man to achieve righteousness after it had failed and proven itself. The law provided a penalty for that failure, but that penalty was met because we were in him. All of us were in Jesus when he went to the cross. So he carried us. He cared, Listen, precious, he carried us through death. He carried us into death, to the grave. He carried us in the resurrection. He ascended with us in spirit to the Father that we might be seated with him. Now that seating is a positional seating of our inner being. It has nothing to do with our outer man. It has nothing to do with our flesh. Our flesh is not going to heaven. Our bodies don't go to heaven. They didn't come from heaven. They're of the world, of the flesh. Flesh and blood doesn't inherit the kingdom of God. What does this mean? It means we've got to learn how to enter the inner path or the inner temple of our being. That's where we meet with God. That's where we come together in spirit. That's what communion really is about. It's coming into the inner realm where our communication is of the thoughts of God, of the knowledge and the spirit of God, even with each other. Who among a man knows the thoughts of that man except the spirit of that man? So who among men knows the thoughts of God but the spirit of God? And he to whom they are revealed. We are coming into a place realizing the ark is in us. The ark is in the most holy realm. That's where the Father is. That's where the Son and the Father are one. That ark represents the throne of God. It is the throne of the high priest now, the mercy seat. That's where we are given a boldness. We come boldly to the throne of grace. Not fearfully. God's not going to kill you. How's he going to kill you if you're coming within? You see, our conscience experience from the world and from the Old Testament, from religion, makes us still think we're dealing with bodies, form, space, time, a material world, senses, etc. We're just learning, learning how to be still and know. Enter into the realm where the thoughts of God, because that's how he speaks. He doesn't have to use words. Words are not of heaven. The word is, but words are of our dimension our frequency. But you see, the word is the idea and the thought of God, and his thoughts are higher, and his thoughts are how he reveals himself within us. And when we're still and we listen, then we begin to understand that river of life within us, that revelation of life comes forth within us, that those rivers of water that rise up within us come from the throne of God, they come to bring joy. They come to bring life. They come to bring wisdom and understanding. Drink from your well. That's what we're called to do. We're not called to sweat. We're not called to figure out things. We're not called to figure out the plan of God. We are here to come into his presence like priests. 
The priests in the holy place, they weren't offering sacrifices. They were offering offerings. They were offering the, they were lighting the lamp. They were offering uh, in the worship through the lamp, the incense on the altar of incense, and also the loaf of bread. The loaves of bread was a ministering unto the Lord. They were ministers of God. That is a representation of what the kingdom of God is. From this realm to the next, we are transitioning into a priestly kingdom. And that's what God wanted David to demonstrate. Yes, come into the city with joy. Come with great celebration. But don't remove the element of the priesthood because you're not going to get anywhere beyond this life apart from the priestly nature of the kingdom of God. That's the holy nation, that royal priesthood. Those who come to God come in that pure realm of priesthood. We are coming into a realm between heaven and earth, the heavens, where the kingdom of God will be administrated as we take back that realm that had governed and ruled the mind of humanity. The powers of darkness being cast down as we are ascending into those high places, overcoming through the blood of the Lamb, the word of our testimony, and loving not our life unto the death, not clinging to our soul life in this world. We find that greater treasure. So precious ones, let's learn how to come into God's presence with the sense that we are invited, because you can't come without faith. You can't communicate with God apart from faith. We can't please God apart from faith because we can't even connect with him. But by faith, it simply means my real life is not visible to me or in this world. But that is my reality as spirit. So as spirit to spirit, we approach the Father within. And eventually we'll learn to approach each other with the, re with the recognition, the reverence, and the honor of treating each other as spirit beings. That's the father of our spirits, the father of lights. We're spirit, we're light. And neither of those qualities has a form or is visible. Why? Because it's the divine nature. The divine nature is omnipresent. The divine nature is limitless. That's our true self. Father is inviting us inward into our true home. He's inviting us inward to a true communion and fellowship. That's where we're safe. That's where we are joined to each other in reality without illusions of separation and et cetera, et cetera. So let's begin to be more conscious. If we're not sure about something, James said, if any man lack wisdom, don't go out and ask the world. Don't go on to Google seeking an app but to give you an answer. Ask of God. Well, where do you ask? You ask within. Where is it going to be revealed? It's going to be revealed within. He gives liberally, and he will not embarrass you. So I ask questions all the time. Most of them may be unnecessary, but I ask. <laughs> but the point is, he is more than willing to reveal understanding. Why? Because understanding is spiritual light. And spiritual light is how we walk out of the darkness back into the light. Amen? He's the father of lights. We are light. Let's be light. And let's lighten up. And let's lighten up on each other as well as ourselves. Amen? Praise God. This is the year of the Lord's favor. So yes, let's declare a new day. But a new day is, this day is full of light. Arise, shine, for your light has come. And the glory of the, the restored glory of the Lord is rising upon the sons. He's bringing many sons to glory. Glory is this condition we came out of. That's what Jesus returned to. That's what we're returning to in him. And when we let go of all of our judgment, all of our rules and belief systems, ideas, religiosity, our own doctrines and concepts and beliefs that we believe are going to save us, when we let it all go and yield to the inner life, and that life is the exercise of the love of God. To love as the Father loves us. To love as the Father and the Son love each other. When we walk in love, we will not fulfill the desires of the flesh. 
We will walk in the peace of God, in the joy of the Lord. We'll walk in right relationship and right respect for God, for each other, for ourselves, for our fellowship, and for the kingdom of God. Let's become lovers of the presence of God. Let's be conscious bringers of the presence of God. Wherever we go, be aware. Wherever I am, God is with me, and his, so is his presence in me to bring light and life to others. Let your light so shine. The inner light, not your concepts, doctrines, and beliefs, but the light of the reality that's in you. Let it shine and let the Father through you and myself radiate to others to ignite that light within them that it begins to shine brighter through fellowship and communion. Let's purpose this week to lighten up and yet become light. Amen? And let's be conscious that we are clothed in a royal priestly garment. What is it? It's righteousness. Hallelujah. Seek first the kingdom of God and its righteousness. And all the stuff that we labor and sweat for, God will provide without the sweat. <laughs> now, you can't beat that. Just stop and think about that. God wants us to live a sweat-free life, worry-free life. He wasn't causing David to get under a burden of law. No, David, hold on here. Let's get in harmony with the principles and the process. You are not going to take this in as a king. All Israel will go in with you, but as a priestly company. And it's the priest that will carry the ark into your city, David. That's how it's to get there. That's how you are to come into that city. And that's where I will establish my glory in that revelation of a priestly kingdom. You see, go back. Exodus 19, the angel of the Lord, Mount Sinai, he offers the covenant, Exodus 19, 5 and 6. If then... You will hearken to my voice and hear my voice. Obey my voice. Keep my covenant. Then you shall be to me a holy nation, a royal priesthood. Well, we have that covenant already established in Christ Jesus. It's in him all these things are coming forth. So let's learn to get our focus right, our priorities right. Let's get our schedules right. What do you mean? Let's learn to become more focused on drawing that presence of God into our life, setting the right pace and course for our day, and not letting the distractions of the world become more like Mary rather than Martha when we're in the house. Don't get so caught up in the things we think are important. When Jesus has already said, the Father knows what you have need of. Wow. That's worry-free, sweat-free living. That's a kingdom lifestyle. Amen? Well, thank you for joining us. We appreciate these moments together. And I just want to just take a moment and just speak a word out of my heart. Now, please listen, because I don't know what I'm going to say, but I'm going to say it. There's a brightness of joy coming to the people of God. Even as the star led the wise men to where the Christ child was being birthed, there's a new star arising, not pointing to a baby Jesus, but pointing to a fully manifest son of whom we are members of his body. And it is in glory that he has returned to that place, and in his glory, us how he is bringing us into the realization that we are there with him in such a place because the Father and the Son have come to us to make their abode with us. This is a new day, precious. Let your past go. Let your issues go. Let your sorrows, your conflicts, your disappointments, and broken relationships, let that baggage go. Step out freely. We need less to go where we're going than what we've used to get where we are. Now just ponder that for a moment. It takes a lot less to finish the journey because we let go of everything else, embrace the promise of God that he will fulfill that good work in us that he has already begun. He will finish it unto the day of Christ Jesus. God bless you. Be alive.
You are a giver of life. That life is in you. God bless you. Have a great week. Thank you for joining us. Thank you.